Okay, so welcome back to another Bitwig tutorial and on this one we need to talk about the Resonator Bank. So this is the one we are going to be using. So this is a very cool one, but uh, whenever you, you know, kind of uh, grab this and throw it right here on your track, uh, it's just not that great, right? So I'm going to go and just give you, I'm just going to play the source we're going to use. It's just going to be a very easy to hear vase. Very easy to hear. Right? Now, as soon as I turn this one on, it's just going to, it's just going to do that. And that's the default. And I cannot say, you know, it's just super nice, right? Super nice to hear. It's a little bit annoying. Okay, but we can, you know, of course, make this one much better and we can uh, make a good use out of this one. So I'm going to go and turn it off and I'm going to show you what this does. So uh, notice that we have uh, six different peaks and what this is, the Resonator Bank, it's like grabbing uh, a filter and removing the conf. You know, let me just show you right here. Removing the conf. Let's say that we disabled the conf so we don't have any conf. So if I go and play it, you know, we have that filter, but then we going to go and add that peak, that resonator. So we get the peak. The problem is that, of course, we need to cut frequencies in order to move that peak. And we are cutting the high frequencies by default. So this is what, you know, how a filter works. Well, this is the same idea. This is the same idea, but we don't get the cutoff. We just get the resonators, right? So we get the peaks. Now, of course, right here, you have the controls. The one, and we're going to go and just, you know, go one by one. You get six different ones, and of course, this one will move the uh, position, the frequency of where that peak is going to be. Then you get how, you know, aggressive that peak is going to be, and then you get a gain control. Because as you can see, if I play this, it's super loud. If I turn it off, it's just not that loud. And this is, of course, we are adding peaks, and we go up in volume. Now, of course, this is super aggressive. So maybe it's not that useful, but maybe you could just blend a little bit and it gives you a different texture, different color. See? Just a great sound now. But of course, if you, do, you just need to use just a tiny bit. Okay. So by default, whenever you double click, this is not going to go all the way down. If I double click this, this and this, it's not going to go all the way down. And if I go and do um, 50%, this is still very aggressive. So if you remove all the peaks, right, you go all down on all the peaks at once, it's just still gonna, it's gonna sound a little bit more like the original sound, right? Just sounds quite like it. If I go right here, and notice it sounds a little bit different. And it's because, of course, this behind the scenes, it's doing a boost of the volume. If I go and play this one, let's just look at the one number one, which is the low frequency. If I go up, we are boosting that. So it's kind of a, we're adding kind of an EQ right here. And of course, since we are boosting, the volume goes up. Right. Now, maybe you're thinking, okay, so if I double click, I go back to zero. Mm, yeah, but it, you go to zero on the actual, on the actual filter, which is, uh, you know, the whole, the whole gain. So if I go to 100%, we get no volume, right? Because this mix is a combination of the filtered, all the filters, and the original source. Since right here we have no gain, we get no volume. And in mix, well, 50%, we are not doing anything of the filters, but the volume is going down of the bass. Now, this is louder, less louder, and no volume. Now, of course, if I go to 50%, we, what we need to do right here is just to add a little bit of peaks. So, I'm going to go and double-click the position, and notice as you change positions, you're going to change colors. So, to move them, you can use this control. And let's say we go to the kind of a 200 right here and we're gonna do a tiny boost and it is the peak right here is going up right so that that's it now of course if this is maybe too aggressive you can lower the volume just a little bit more and it is it sounds different even though we are not doing a lot so I'm gonna go and do another one right here why not and I'm gonna go and boost that peak and of course boost the volume and now we get different timbres this is what this 
resonator bank is all about just getting different different uh, different sounds from one single sound now look at this if i go right here to the number three and i boost this frequency yeah i go up right so we're gonna get a peak right there right we, we know that but what happens if i go to the number four and put it on the same place where we have the number three right and i boost you know both we're gonna start to get this tones same thing that what happens when we use a filter when we go all the way up we're gonna start to get this sound all right so let me just move it to a different place i'm gonna do the same thing with the other one just move it go a little bit up all right that is how the sound changes way different now I'm gonna go to the final one and maybe boost somewhere, somewhere right here. And I'm going random on the frequencies. What you could do, if I go down, much nicer. But this is the sound right now. It's not, it's not super aggressive like when we throw the resonator bank to uh, as a default. And this gives you a different timbre. If I, if I uh, turn it off, it's dull. It sounds good because it's a bass, but it's just a little bit dull. So this one will give you something else. Something extra. So I, in my opinion, if I if I use this just like this, it sounds great. I, I really like it. I could use it. You know, it's a very useful, uh, you know, effect. Now, of course, what happens if you're, you know, go right here and maybe you do too much of something and you kind of uh, like it, but you want to go a little bit less aggressive on everything. So right here, you get the global controls. And on this one, what you do, you move the frequencies all at once. All right, and on this one, what you do, you go through all these knobs right here to the peaks ones, to the peak ones, and you move them down or you go up. Can you see the peaks? Yeah. So it's a global control and this one is the same but it's going to be for the game so if i go all the way you know we get much less or we get much or we get much more <laughs> sorry for that oh it's way too much all right so that's what it is now of course you cannot argue that the the sound still it's just a, a little bit dull you know it's a cool effect but you know, are we gonna use it? Well, this is really useful, just like when we use the filter. What happens if I go and add some kind of a modulation right here? I'm gonna go to a beat LFO, and I'm gonna go right here and maybe do a little bit of modulation. I'm gonna go and do... Just move the frequencies. And I'm gonna go and do a bipolar. Now, maybe it's too aggressive. And we get a cool sound. Now remember, now remember all the um, all the uh, not all, but most of the uh, plugins that you get or the effects you get with Bitwick are, uh, are to to, exp to do a little bit of experimentation. So you can get different sounds of something dull just like this. So you need to go right here and do some playing. You know, you need to play around with this. Of course, we can do whatever we want we have, because we have a lot of tools. Let's say I go to the steps one. And on this one, what I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be moving this frequency. I'm going to go moving down this one. And I'm going to go and do this one, right? So now I can draw the steps of how we want this one to move. And they will move. And we're going to get start to get, you know, a lot of movement. Right. So again, it's not the best sound, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna get. Now, of course, all this, uh, what we are doing, it depends on the source material. In this case, we have a bass. And I choose this one because, I've chosen this one because we don't have a million frequencies right here. So this is just a bit nicer to hear. Whenever you have something that it's very large on the spectrum and you're boosting, uh, it's gonna get, you know, a little bit loud and annoying sometimes. So that's why I'm using a bass. Now, this is what it does. 
behind the scenes. You can boost some peaks, you can create some peaks on some fundamental frequencies, and then you can go up or down in volume. And then you get the globals. Then, of course, you can do a mix and you get the glide and the keyboard control. Okay, and notice that this one, it's off, the glide, it's off. And this is because we can use this plugin along with a MIDI track, right? So this one, what it will do, it will recognize the uh, keys that we are playing or the MIDI we are playing, and uh, it will just move the frequencies to the notes we are playing. And in that this case, I really like this plugin for this. I, I wouldn't use it a lot for just a clip, just like this, but I can, you know, use it for an ARP. So I have an ARP right here. It's just a pretty dumb ARP. Let me just show you how this sounds without the resonator back. So I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna go and do play. And of course, I made a mistake. I just need to play this one. I'm gonna go up in the speed, maybe something like there. So this is the sound that I'm using the polysynth. Now, of course, everything sounds like crap whenever you don't have uh, effects. So I'm gonna go and bring a, a little bit of reverb and why not a little bit of delay. And let me just go back. Let's go delay. Just a tiny bit. And notice I'm not changing a lot of the defaults. Make it maybe a little bit less of blend. Just to get a nicer sound. Alright. Okay, so of course I'm gonna go right here and just enable the comp. Or the resonator bar, actually. And notice we get nothing. And this is because this one works on an audio range. But notice that after each device, we are getting the midis right here. So if I put it behind the synth, we're gonna start getting it. And notice it, it sounds just like this. And this was uh, this is this is what uh, what I was telling you about the frequencies. You more frequencies you get. It's gonna get a little bit more annoying. Now I cannot say I, he I hate the sound, but if I go to the keyboard control, you get this. Right. Great, just a great sound. I'm gonna go a little bit less on the peaks. It sounds great. Now, of course, uh, how we hear or we perceive some sounds and how we, our brain identifies sounds, it's by, you know, recognizing all the speaks on the different harmonics. For example, if I go right here, let me go to Fab Filter. Uh, if I create a peak right here and do a Q, something like that, I know what the, that this peak is going to be standing on F sharp. So if I create different peaks, we are going to be able to recognize uh, maybe a chord or a sound that sounds in some pitch. Pitch. That's how it works. That's why sometimes when we use EQs and we have a sound, we need to know what is the underlying chords so we can, you know, provide a nice tiny boost and just, you know, enhance those, uh, the chords. So behind the scenes, this is what this is doing, is reading whatever we are sending as MIDI and it's going to that frequency on that position on the keyboard and it recognizes the peaks and it's just, you know, creating the peaks and then moving as we change the, 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 the keys. And that's why we get the sound and not the other one. Notice that this one is very static. It's because we are doing a peak on the same frequency. But on this one, it's moving them around. Great, right? Now, of course, as well, you get the glide control. And now notice that if this is off, the glide control is off. If I go on and I go up up on the glide, the changes between the different keys and the different peaks is not going to be so kind of a in a square fashion. It's just not going to be go, you know, directly to the peak. Not going to be so direct. So if I do glide, it's going to smooth the transition between peaks and we can see the movement, you know, going back and forward. And we get this vowel kind of a sound. Now, on top of this, you can, of course, get, go crazy and add, still add modulations if you wish, just like we did before. So if I go there, and then just go and just move this around. Right. So. So now the resonator, resonator bank is not so useless anymore, right? We can create a good sound, just a, a sound that you cannot get with, uh, you know, pretty much anything.
Okay, so remember to like and subscribe and uh, check Patreon. Everything I do right here on YouTube gets released on Patreon and uh, maybe weeks or months earlier, you know, before it reaches YouTube, because on YouTube I can do only one video a day and uh, upload one video a day. And everything I do right here on this in this case uh, is going to be uploaded. I mean, the project, the bid with project is going to be uploaded uh, to Patreon so you can get the download, uh, you know, from the project. All right. So hopefully you have some fun. Uh, this was useful and see you on the next one.